Hello YouTube, this is Sniper's End, and today we're going to roast some marshmallows and talk about Douglas Mawson. We're going to be watching a video from around 2009, and it's the one and only time I ever got a nuclear in this game. I've got something like 12 Brutals, but I exclusively play Free For All in this game. And in Free For All, considering you need 30 kills to finish the game, it's pretty hard to get a nuclear unless you're really going for it. I always found going for stuff like nuclears and nukes to be pretty stressful actually so I don't enjoy it very much so today we're gonna watch the one and only time that I got a nuclear this video shows my new play style very well which is basically if you can't beat them join them I camp very much and this is my strategy for Express it's actually one of my least favorite maps in Black Ops 2 but it just so happens that this was the one time that I was able to get a nuclear. Now with that out of the way, we're back to our regularly scheduled program. The early 1900s are often called the heroic age of Antarctic exploration, and for very good reason. It was in this period that Ernest Shackleton took 28 people to Antarctica, sunk his ship, but managed to get everyone back to civilization alive. This was the time when Roald Amundsen, sorry if I'm not saying that correctly, was the first human to see the South Pole. At the same time, a couple hundred miles away, Lawrence Oates, who was a part of Robert Falcon Scott's expedition to the South Pole, walked out of his tent and said, I am just going outside and maybe some time. He had frostbite on his feet and was unable to march any farther so he sacrificed himself so that his comrades might have a better chance for survival. However, in my opinion, none of these stories compare to the story of Douglas Mawson. In 1911, Mawson took 30 people to Antarctica. One big difference between his journey and the other expeditions of the time was Douglas Mawson wasn't going for the glory of being the first to reach the South Pole. He went for science. His goals were to reach the Southern Magnetic Pole, to learn more about the geography of Antarctica, and to map the previously unexplored part of Antarctica, which is south of Australia. In late 1912, Mawson, Xavier Mertz, Belgrave Ninnis, and several sledding dogs set off to the east from base camp on a mapping expedition. They made excellent time, and one month and four days later after setting out, they had made it 300 miles from base camp when tragedy struck. Belgrave Ninnis, several dogs, and one of the sleds with most of the supplies fell into a crevasse. The two remaining men tried to save their friend, but they never saw or heard Ninnis again. With only enough food to last about a week on their current ration, they immediately turned around towards the base camp. With such little food remaining, Mawson and Mertz started to eat the sled dogs as they died from starvation. What no one knew at the time was eating the liver of any carnivore was toxic due to the fatal amounts of vitamin A that distorted them. It's believed that Mertz ate most of the livers as he deteriorated much faster than Mawson. One month and 200 miles later, Xavier Mertz died leaving Mawson to pull the sled by himself for 100 miles with very little food remaining. The last 100 miles showed extreme mental strength on Douglas Mawson's part. Due to hypervitaminosis A, at one point the soles of his feet fell off. At this point, any normal man might have fantasized about giving up, but Douglas Mawson did not. He taped the soles of his feet back on and kept marching. When Mawson came closer to base camp, he fell into a crevasse himself. Luckily, he learned from the death of Ninnis, and he had fashioned a rope sling that held him to his sled. And the sled had stuck on a piece of ice, preventing Mawson from falling all the way to the bottom of the crevasse. But he was nowhere near out of the woods. The rope was 30 feet long, and Mawson was at the very bottom of it. He was at the end of his physical strength, and he had to climb hand over hand to get out of the crevasse. Douglas Mawson managed to get to the top of the crevasse when he slipped and fell back in. At this point, 
He was literally at the end of his rope, and contemplated untying himself from his sling for a quick death. When a quote from the poem The Quitter by Robert Service came to mind. Just have one more try. It's dead easy to die. It's the going on living that's hard. He managed to get out and make it back to base camp after this trying ordeal. When he finally made it back to base camp, he found someone who looked at him and said, My God, which one are you? This man let him know that the ship that was meant to take him back to Australia had been waiting for him for two weeks, and they had just left a few hours ago. And thus, Douglas Mawson had to spend another winter in Antarctica after this terrible time. But he survived and managed to accomplish most of the goals of the Australasian Antarctic Expedition, which permanently cemented him as one of the toughest men ever to live. If there's anything to be learned from this expedition, it's that the quote from Robert Falcon Scott after discovering that Roald Amundsen had beat him to the South Pole is true. The quote was, Great God, what an awful place, referring to Antarctica. Thank you all for watching, and if you'd like to know more about this expedition, I got most of the information from reading the book Alone on the Ice. It's an amazing read, and I would recommend it to anyone who is interested in the history of Antarctica. If you want me to do a video on any subject, let me know in the comments, and I might do some research on it and make a video. See y'all next time.